any kind of funny stories from the process of writing the book uh, and anything that didn't make it into the book that, uh, that, that you just found either funny or, or you think people would enjoy hearing about? Yeah, definitely. Um, a couple of fun Zuck stories if you're up for them. Um, first is, so I knew Zuckerberg uses Snapchat and um, I kind of wanted to get him into this position where he admitted it to me. Um, and so I'm telling him, you know, we're talking about stories and I have an idea of how stories came to be, you know, again, this is part of the feedback culture, people telling him that you need to do this or else your products are going to die. And I, I knew that he was using Snapchat and he, he alluded to like, you know, watching stories. And I was like, so you did it on Snapchat. And he goes, well, and Instagram and I was like, but you use Snapchat. And he goes, yeah, but I use all of our competitors products, uh, products. And then he said, um, he said uh, he um, was, uh, when Facebook was starting to experiment into the dating app scene, he had to try them out. So he got onto the dating apps with his own picture and started experimenting with them. And um, he said he was on this one app where you match with a new person every day. Um, and he thought it was a cool looking app. So he showed it to his wife, Priscilla. He goes, hey, Priscilla, check it out you know, here's this dating app that's pretty interesting. And she looked at the person on screen and was scheduled to have dinner with her the next night. So anyway, it, it, it's kind of one of those stories where I'm like, okay, I'm sitting here next to Zuckerberg and he's telling me he's using dating apps to meet his wife's friends. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it, and, and mm -hmm. look, I think part of that is like, mm -hmm. it's funny, right? And, and, uh, and, and you know, one, those are great stories, but two is, uh, mm -hmm. it also shows the level of, um, maybe obsession is the wrong word, but, but just, uh, really mm -hmm. wanting to understand how technology works. What are other people doing? Uh, what should we be doing? Right. And, and being critical of, uh, of products. And, and I've said over and over again, you know, Mark was, uh, probably one of the only people I've ever met that could sit in a room and talk about high level strategy of an entire division within a you know multinational corporation. And then literally during the demo, zoom in and pick up, you know, why is that pixel off? Right. And just the mm -hmm. ability to kind of go up and down. And, uh, and one time somebody said to me, uh, who'd been in the company a long time, they said, look, you got to remember that Mark has more context than anybody else who works here. He's been working on it longer mm -hmm. than everybody. So he has the story behind every single one of these products. He's seen them all get developed and all this. And, and if you kind of go across all the major tech companies, that is one thing that remains constant is most of them are still run by uh, their founders or the founders are still in some sort of influential position, which I'm assuming that you kind of saw as one of those patterns across the companies, right? Yeah, totally. And I think that like, you're right. The way that he's using these apps shows a willingness to believe in a product outside of Facebook right? Like the problem that companies get into is they believe that their software is the best. Therefore, they'll never even try another person's software. And like, to me, it was surprising that Zuckerberg is using Snapchat and dating apps. But like, looking back, of course he is. Um, like Amazon has an interesting leadership principle called invent and simplify. And the idea is, um, you know, you invent and then you build systems to make sure you're not spending too much time supporting that existing product. But they say explicitly, you know, we don't have this um, dedication to building, to using stuff only invented here. If something was invented elsewhere, we'll use it. And we're going with best of breed. You contrast that with Microsoft. When Steve Ballmer was running Microsoft, you couldn't bring an Apple product into the campus. You know, Steve Ballmer once pretended to throw an iPhone in a meeting with people. Um, so people sort of knew if I'm working on a Mac, even if I'm developing for Mac users, I'm going to get a dirty look if I'm working on uh, on this computer in Apple and sorry in Microsoft Campus, and I think it sort of shows when you have a willingness and an appreciation to ideas from anywhere, when you have a willingness to admit that other companies are developing good software, and you want to learn why they've done well, then you're going to be in good shape. But when you want to um, sort of you know again look and protect your asset and think that that's the only thing that matters in the world and that all your competitors. Uh, don't have a chance in the world, that arrogance ends up leading to bad business outcomes.